Hey all you cool cats and kittens, welcome to Brew Cheese, where we brew up the finest of cheese. I'm Travis, and thanks for tuning in. If you're new to our channel, we brew up commander decks on a budget, often with an unexpected twist. This series uses a $100 budget and does not include the cost of the commander. This video is going to be a little different. Instead of my usual practice of picking a commander and going from there, I wanted to build a theme deck. A deck based on a popular show on the net's source of flicks. It was the only show anyone could talk about a few months ago. I refer, of course, to the Big Cat King. No, not its real name, but close enough. So, to build this theme deck, I had to find a commander that would either represent our Big Cat King or a cat he might have in his zoo. I went with the latter and chose Nethroi Apex of Death. Nethroi is a 2 white black green for a 5 5 cat nightmare beast. It has death touch and lifelink and the ability to mutate for the cost of 4 hybrid green white black black. When it mutates, we get to return any number of creatures from our graveyard with total power 10 or less to the battlefield. In addition to mutate, we are giving the companion mechanic a try. Our companion is Kahira, the Orphan Guard. It's a 3-2 cat beast with vigilance that provides an anthem effect and vigilance to five different creature types. The only creatures in your deck can be those five types, so of course, we're running cats. The companion mechanic has already been eroded a bit, so here's the way it works. It begins the game in the companion zone. Once per game, as a sorcery, you may pay three generic and put it into your hand. From then on, it acts as though it were in your deck when the game began. I tried to stay true to the feel of the show while still building a mostly viable deck. So don't expect cards that represent the Big Cat King or that witch Karen Baskell. Our strategy is cats. Lots of cats. Ramp out our big cats, keep them on the field by mutating our commander, and buff them with our companion. We do also have a life gain sub theme. So let's get started. We begin as usual with our ramp package. We're in green, so that means lots of elves. No, wait, no elves. We'll be using non-creature ramp here. Cats apparently don't like to tend garden. We use commander staples, Sol Ring, and Arcane Signet. Sol Ring needs no introduction, and Arcane Signet costs two and taps for one of our commander's color identity. Cultivate and Kodama's Reach are functional copies that fetch one basic land onto the field and one into your hand. Farseek fetches a non-forest land onto the field tapped. That land does not have to be a basic one, by the way. Colony Heart Expedition is a two-drop enchantment with landfall. Whenever a land enters under our control, it gets a counter. We can remove three counters from it and sack it to fetch two basics onto the field tapped. New Horizons is an aura that lets the enchanted land tap for two mana of any color. Please note this is a separate ability and does not add to what the land normally provides. It also puts a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control when it enters. Overgrowth is also an aura that adds green green whenever the land it enchants is tapped for mana. This is an addition to what is normally provided. Blanket of Night is a budget version of Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. It costs one black black for an enchantment that makes all lands swamps in addition to their normal types. How is this ramp you ask? We have a land that cares about that, but we'll get there in a bit. So, I was kind of dishonest when I said I don't have a representative card for Karen Baskell. Initially, I didn't. Then I stumbled on this card, Enchantress's Presence. The art kind of works. Anyway, it's a two and a green enchantment that draws a card when we play an enchantment. Since we have quite a few enchantments, this is going to help out tremendously. Greed is three and a black enchantment that lets us pay black and two life to draw a card at instant speed. Colossal Majesty draws us a card at the beginning of our upkeep if we control a creature with power four or higher. Elemental Bond draws a card whenever we have a three power or higher creature into the battlefield. 
This does include tokens which we will be generating. Lifecrafter's Bestiary lets us pay an extra green when we cast a creature to draw a card. It also lets us scry one on our upkeep. Death Reap Ritual draws us a card on each end step if a creature died that turn, and it doesn't matter whose creature. Moldervine Reclamation costs 3 green black and draws us a card whenever a creature we control dies. We also gain 1 life when that happens. Dawn of Hope lets us pay 2 generic when we gain life to draw a card. It can also generate life linking soldiers, which is useful after a board wipe. Finally, Keeper of Fables draws us a card whenever a non-human we control deals combat damage to a player. Now let's move on to the stars of this menagerie, the big cats. I did try to pick creatures that might show up in a zoo, but most of the cats here are more warrior-like than a zoo would try to keep. So this is more of a zoo slash fight club of cats. Let's start with Fleece Main Lion. It costs Selesnia for a 3-3. It has Monstrosity 1 for the cost of 3 in Selesnia. When it is monstrous, it has Hexproof and Indestructible. Fleetfoot Panther has Flash, costs 3, is a 3-4, and bounces a green or white creature we control to its owner's hand when it enters. Kasali Ambusher has what I call Pseudo Flash. If a creature is attacking you while you control a plains and a forest, you may play it for free and as though it had Flash. It also has Reach and is a 2-3. Loam Lion is a fantastic creature. It is a white version of an old red creature that was popular when I began playing. It costs white for a 1-1 that gets plus 1 plus 2 as long as you control a forest. In this deck, it's a 2-3 for 1 mana. Value. It also costs less than 50 cents at the time of recording, so budget value. Twilight Panther also costs a single white, but is a 1-2 that can be given death touch for the cost of a single black. Erebo, Roar of the World, is a legendary cat. It is a 5-5 that is normally a commander for cat dance. He's regulated to the 99 here, though. Whenever another cat attacks, we can pay one white green. This gives that cat trample and plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is its power. You can do this for each cat you attack with as long as you have the mana. Hungry Lynx is a 2-2 for 1 in green. It gives all cats we control protection from rats. On our end step, one of our opponents gets a 1-1 black rat token with death touch. Then, when a rat dies, each of our cats gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter. Huntmaster Liger is a 3-4 for 3 white. It's more effective when it mutates for 2 in a white. When it mutates, other creatures we control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of times it's mutated. Necropanther is a 3-3 for 1 white black. It mutates for 2 generic and 2 Orzhov hybrid mana. When it mutates, we return target creature with C and C3 or less to the field from our graveyard. Pride of Lions costs 3 green green for a 4-4 four four that can assign combat damage as though it weren't blocked. King of the Pride gives other cats we control plus 2 plus 1. Miri the Cursed is a legendary cat that has flying, first strike, and haste. It's a 3-2 that gains a plus 1 plus 1 counter when it deals combat damage to a creature. Rakshasa Gravecaller is a 3-6 for 4 black with exploit. When it exploits, you put 2 2-2 two, two black zombie tokens onto the field. Nakadal War Pride costs 3 green 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 for a 3-3. Three, three. It has to be blocked by only one creature if able. When it attacks, you create X token copies of it tapped in attacking where X is the number of creatures defending player controls. These tokens only last until the end of turn. Trained Caracal costs white for a 1-1 with lifelink. 
Horned Cheetah and Ajani's Sunstriker are mostly copies as they are both 2-2 with lifelink. However, one costs white white and the other costs 2 white green. Ajani's Chosen creates a 2-2 token whenever an enchantment enters under our control. Phantom Neshoba costs 5 green white for a 0-0 with trample. It does enter with 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters and lifelink. Whenever it would take damage, that damage is prevented and a single counter is removed. Cub Warden costs 3 and a white for a 3-5 lifelinker. However, it mutates for 2 white-white and creates 2 1-1 tokens with lifelink whenever it mutates. Regal Caracal costs 3 white-white for a 3-3. It provides our cats an anthem and lifelink. It also creates two 1-1 one, one cat tokens with lifelink upon entering. Pride Sovereign gets plus one plus one for each other cat we control. It can also create two cat tokens with lifelink by paying white, tapping, and exerting. Leonin War Leader is a 4-4 for two white white that creates two 1-1 one, one tokens with lifelink when it attacks. Said tokens are also tapped in attacking. Ajani's Pride Mate gains a plus one plus one counter whenever we gain life. Note this only counts instances of life gained, not the amount actually gained. So four, two, two lifelink creatures dealing damage gains us eight life and the Pride Mate four counters. Felidar Sovereign is our payoff for all of our life gain. It costs 4 white white, is a 4 6 with life link and vigilance. It also wins us the game if we have 40 or more life at the beginning of our upkeep. Jedit Ojanin of Efrava, I hope I said that right, creates a single 2 2 token with Forest Walk whenever it attacks or blocks. Jedit also has Forest Walk and is a 5 5 for 3 green green green. Felidar Cub is our last creature. It costs one and a white for a 2-2 that can be sacked to destroy an enchantment. Board wipes don't really keep with our theme of the show. However, I found one that seems to fit. Coercive Portal. This four drop artifact is not a traditional board wipe. It calls for a vote of the players at the beginning of our upkeep. We start the vote and each player chooses Carnage or Homage. As long as the peons pay homage or tie the vote, we draw a card. If, however, they vote for Carnage, all non-land permanents are destroyed. Given the political aspirations of the Big Cat King, I felt this was in keeping with the theme of the show. Targeted removal does fit, so... Beast Within destroys a permanent and gives a 3-3 beast token. At instant speed, by the way. Contract Killing, in addition to being spot on for our theme, destroys a creature and creates two treasure tokens. Assassinate, also wins for flavor, destroys a tapped creature. Murder, again with the flavor win, destroys target creature. Casualties of War, finally, no flavor win, costs two black black green green. Expensive, but a fantastic removal toolbox. It lets you choose to destroy up to one of each of the following. Artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you can't find at least three potential targets for this... I mentioned earlier that we were running quite a few enchantments. Here we go. Game Preserve checks the top card of each player's library at the beginning of our upkeep. If all of those cards are creatures, they get put into play under their owner's control. This provides information when it doesn't provide creatures. Yes, there's a risk, but meh, you only live once. Night Dealings costs two black black. Whenever a source we control deals damage to a player, that many counters are put on Night Dealings. Then we pay two black black and remove X counters to tutor up a card with CMC X. This is at instant speed and is repeatable. 
Heartless Summoning reduces the generic costs of creatures we cast by two. It also reduces power and toughness by one each, so careful with your smaller creatures and tokens. Alpha Status is an aura that gives the enchanted creature plus two plus two for each other creature in play that shares a creature type with it. I want to point out that if we enchant, say, Nethroi, for example, it gets the boost for each cat, nightmare, and beast on the field, not just under our control. Beastmaster Ascension is not just a flavor win. Whenever a creature we control attacks, it gets a quest counter. Then, if it has seven or more counters, all of our creatures get plus five, plus five. Note that tokens created already attacking do not add counters to this. Feast on the Fallen puts a counter on a creature we control at the beginning of each upkeep as long as an opponent lost life the turn before. Noble Purpose is a severely underrated card. Whenever a creature we control deals combat damage, we gain that much life. This is not lifelink on the creature. Therefore, it stacks with lifelink. Curse of Predation gives any creature that attacks the cursed player a plus one plus one counter. Curse of Vengeance costs a single black. Whenever the cursed player casts a spell, the curse gets a counter. When enchanted player loses the game, we gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of counters on the curse. Finally, we end our spells as the big cat king ended his reign as king with a rest. This aura prevents the enchanted creature from attacking, blocking, or using its activated abilities. So what lands are we building our zoo on? Let's start with the panoramas. Bant, Esper, Junt, and Naya Panorama all tap for one. We can pay one, tap, and sack it to fetch a basic land onto the field tap. Each panorama limits our search of land types. Bant and Naya will get us a plains or a forest, Jund will get us a forest or swamp, and Esper will get us a plains or swamp. Cross and Verge enters tapped, taps for one, or can search a forest and a plains that do not have to be basic at the cost of two tapping and sacking. Blighted Woodlands taps for one, or we can pay three and a green, tap, sack, and fetch two basics onto the field tapped. Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds fetch basics onto the field tapped. Exotic Orchard taps for one mana that a land our opponent's control produces. Bonder's Enclave taps for one, or we can pay three and tap to draw a card if we control a powerful creature. Cabal Stronghold taps for one, or we can pay three and tap to add a black for each basic swamp we control. This is a budget Cabal Coffers. We have three Pain Lands. Caves of Koilos taps for black or white for one damage. Lana War Wastes taps for black or green for one damage. And Murmuring Boss will enter tap tap for black or white for one damage and is also a forest, which means it also taps for green. Tainted Field and Tainted Wood are similar in that each taps for one generic and can also tap for black or white or green respectively as long as we control a swamp. Sandstep Citadel taps for one of our colors and enters tap. Opal Palace can filter mana to our color identity. If said filtered mana is used to cast our commander, that commander gets a plus one plus one counter for each time it's been cast from the command zone. Commander Staple Command Tower needs no introduction. We finish with eight forests, seven plains, and four swamps. This deck is fairly straightforward, and there aren't many combos or synergies that need to be explained. There is one I want to point out though. Blanket of Night and Cabal Stronghold. Blanket of Night simply adds Swamp to the type of each land. It does not remove the word Basic. 
so each basic forest and plains you control counts towards the amount of black produced by the stronghold with Blanket of Night out. For those of you interested, the average CMC of this deck is 3.39, with the vast majority of spells costing 3. The total cost for this deck came up to 99.42 on the day of recording. These prices are powered by TCG Player, not a sponsor, using optimized pricing. The total does include shipping and allows for cards of any condition. Thank you for watching, and if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe, share this video with a friend, give us a like, or leave a comment telling us what we missed or what you'd like to see in the future. See you again next video.